So something we've had a ton of requests for then is videos on how to mask a car. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today for you. I've got this 2015 Ford Focus in that we've got to paint three doors on. So two on the passenger side and one on the driver's side. Now what I'm gonna show you is, um, we've also got to paint the quarter on the driver's side as well, which is an ideal opportunity to show you masking inside door shuts because we're gonna to have to be coming across the shut line through the quarter and the rear door shut. So first place I'm gonna start that I'm gonna concentrate on this rear door shut is this plastic seal cover. So because this is not being removed, and we don't need to remove it, what we're gonna do is start with, we wanna take this off completely, so that when we put our sheeting over, it gives us a nice border to tape to. So what I'm gonna do is make sure I've got enough tape on the face there, so that gives me a nice taping surface. And also then, we're gonna mask inside this door shut a little bit as well, because we know that a lot of the paint and overspray is gonna blow in here, so if we mask it properly, we know that's not gonna cause us a problem or cause any rectification work afterwards. So I'll mask around the seal about that far, then what we'll do is carry the masking through just beyond the joint between the front door and the back door because obviously the edge of the back door is where we're going to be stopping the paint anyway. So this is about as far as that overspray will actually get in because the door seal sits up against this edge, it's not going to go any further and it means that I know if we cover up to here, we're good as gold. So I will extend that from in front of the door in just a moment but now I'll just continue taping a little bit along the face as well. Make sure you come up over that leading edge. Join the tape in nice, push all the air out from under it as well. It's just about being thorough masking and making sure you get every little bit that you wanna get. There's no holes in it, no gaps where overspray can creep in and cause you a problem down the line. Right, so because that's the seal cover done then, what we're gonna do now is a technique uh, known as flip edge, which is one thing a lot of people ask about. And a lot of people are, it seems to be sort of mystified a little bit, but all we do is we take the tape and we flip over the leading edge like so, just into a small bead like this. And then essentially what you wanna do, if you're doing a flip edge anywhere, you want it to be in one run. So you don't really wanna join it along an edge or anything like that, because that can allow, again, gaps and spaces and voids where the overspray can get in. And I'm just keeping it as consistent as I can now. So it's a couple of mil wide, as you can see there, nothing massive. The bigger the flip, the more space the overspray has to get under. And what we want is a nice little tight, clean edge on it. So that if we, have, if we need to, we can buff it out. But most of the time, this just fizzles out and leaves virtually no edge whatsoever. So I know I've got enough for my door shut then. So what I'll be doing with this, I'm just gonna stick it there. I'll put a little bit of masking on the top because, so this molding on the rear quarter light here, customer didn't want this removing because of the increased cost. So this is one bit of molding that we are gonna mask. I've taken the scraper moldings off the doors uh, because obviously they're easy to remove and you don't have to sort of cut out or rebond or anything like that. Right, so with our flip edge then, what we do, you can see we've got this line, this aperture in here, and the edge of the flip edge where I flipped it wants to sit nicely against that edge there. So I'm just gonna start laying that on. And it's important as well, you don't wanna stretch this too much because it will just lift that front edge. And you want that front edge sitting nicely against the panel. So when you get to a corner or a bend or something like this, just hold it down and kind of bend the back of the tape like so so that you can make sure that front edge sits where it needs to sit. Whereas if you pull that front edge around, it's gonna lift straight up and then you're gonna have a big void, again, where you can create quite a heavy edge under when you, when you put your clear coat down. So you can see, just working along, I will go back and adjust that top section. It just gets me heading in the right direction. You see, just take your time to lay it on, make sure it's in the right place. And what you can find sometimes is as it sticks down, it will pull in a little bit and start to lift that flip edge. So if that happens, push backwards from the flip edge and stick it down that way. And that way you'll know that your leading edge then is always gonna be well established and it's not gonna lift. Okay, so that's that bit done. I've got a little bit spare I can put to one side there. So like I said, I'm just gonna come back and adjust this top edge now because as usual on that sort of tight corner, it's trying to lift. So what I wanna do is make sure that I put that leading edge down first and let anything else just fall behind and come down afterwards.
Okay, there we go. That's the door shut, flip edge done then. And now what I'm gonna do is I'll just mask backwards off that a couple of, couple of tape widths, just to make sure that uh, none of the overspray gets in and goes too far. So that's the door shut area masked as, need, as much as I need to mask it. Now, there is a product um, that we normally use, which is a foam edge, which basically you lay straight down the edge of the panel like I did with the flip edge and shut the door and it fills the gap. But a lot of the guys requesting this video are wanting to do projects at home on their own cars or project cars and won't have access to foam edge or won't have it or won't want to invest in it for one job. However, I will link it in the video for you if it is something you want, but I thought I would show you the more traditional way first because everyone that wants to do this will have a roll of masking tape and won't necessarily have foam edge. So a little bit more flip edge then. We've done the rear door shut. I've masked off this rear quarter light. Now, anywhere the clear coat's gonna be going, I wanna be making sure that everywhere adjacent to that is completely sealed in. So we're gonna be putting a blend up here on the, the D pillar, if you like. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip edge inside this, uh, the, the boot or trunk area, just on that edge where the lacquer and the clear coat's gonna be going. And then we'll show you as well how I'll set up a blend just here, like a nice area that we polish up ready to receive the clear coat. So first thing to do, open her up. I've already cleaned in there, just wipe out any last bits of dust. And then what we're gonna do is again, follow the edge down nicely. And we're just gonna lay our flip edge in. And I only need to go up to that swage line that you can see because I'm gonna come off there with another little piece of flip edge just to make everything drop in seamlessly. And there we go, that's nicely done down to the edge. Excellent, and I'll just put a little bit more tape in there. I'll come around this edge as well. That's perfect, that gives me everything I need. A little bit more tape in there just as a way to block any overspray from going in. Okay, so I'll wrap a little bit more around the tailgate glass as well. Again, it's just all about damage limitation. If you can make sure that you're covering any overspray areas, um, so you're only left with a quick wipe down at the end or something like that. It's, it's way better than having to try and wipe everything down with thinners or polish a load of overspray off if that decides to happen whilst you're doing your job. There we go. Right, so I'll drop that down then. I'll put a little bit more tape down there as well because I've got the, the groundwork laid already. Okay, so we've put that flip edge in there and to come off here, we're gonna have this blend in this area. So basically what I wanna do is just mask out an area here that's gonna be left open during the clear coat. Tape. So essentially what I'll do is I'll find that swage line, I'll lay a, a bit of tape just a few mil away from it. And then what we'll do is make another bit of flip edge. Because flip edging is not only used for door shuts, it's the way that you can blend onto a swage line as well. So if you have a body line or something like that, like for instance, this quarter, if you're only lacquering it up to there, you could use a flip edge on that, on that line and clear coat up to there. So what we will do then is just lay that down nicely. And that means that any overspray that does drift up there while we're doing the blend, is just gonna disappear nicely under that tape. It's not gonna form a rock hard edge or anything like that. So that's that bit sorted. I'll close that off when we get a bit later in the masking stage, it's probably somewhere about here. But for now, I'll get the edge of the tailgate, the light and the bumper done, and then we'll move around to the other side. Now, one thing I will point out, folks, is if you have to mask a light or a piece of trim like this, right, it's people have the tendency and the habit to push the tape really far into that gap and then like sort of stick it down. This can cause you a bit of a problem when you come to clear coat stage, especially when peeling it off because in these gaps and areas, clear coat gets in there and can kind of, you know, the panel, the clear coats on the panel can stick to the tape. And what, you, what can happen from time to time is as you pull it out, you'll actually pull your new clear coat up with it. So the way I tend to do it is it's important that you basically find the edge of that, that trim, that light, whatever it might be. Just go to the edge, just enough as a slight overhang, and then just use a fingernail or your finger just to roll that edge over just slightly. Now when we pull that off, we can see there's a nice clear gap. I'm not gonna get any clear coat stuck to it, but it is also completely protecting the light and we're not gonna get any problems when we pull it off. 
So with the way the fuel door is designed on this car, I have just laid a flip edge around the inside as well that we can close the fuel door onto. And that's just gonna, again, stop any problems with overspray or anything like that creeping too far in there and just create this with a nice edge. Now you'll probably notice how I've done that in little bits because it means I can completely get that nice curve covered up properly rather than trying to go around in one piece. It's never gonna work for you. So I establish all that and then I'll just put a nice strip of tape to reinforce that along the back edge and then I know it's gonna hold in place and not cause me any problems. So if like me, then you've removed the scraper molding on your car, if you're painting the door, the way you want to mask this area, okay, I usually have these, um, these door frame trims. And what I do is mask those out nice and clean like so, make sure they're all covered. So I want to get to the point where I can close the door and finish the masking on the door. So I'll just drop a piece of tape a little bit further down inside as well, just to cover that nicely. And then we'll do the same on the front one. Front one's a tad easier because you don't have that little piece of foam and the seam sealer sticking out from the back edge of the door. Okay, let's just open that up a bit and we'll wrap that tape around the edge. Okay, now we can shut that door. We know that door shuts ready, we know it's good to go. So now what we do is we back mask off the top door edge. So back masking is essentially turning the tape round so the sticky side is facing towards you. And then we drop it down inside. and then just run your finger or a plastic trim remover down the inside just stick it to the panel. Now, what I like to do at this point then is take a little bit of tape and just pick up the edge of that tape I've just put on for the back masking and tape it back to the window nice and flat. Now, essentially what's gonna happen is when I come through here now with the masking film, the sheeting, it's gonna stick nicely to that tape. I can trim that and put a, a normal piece of tape over the top and that completely seals that in. So I've masked out the seal cover the same way I did on the driver's side there. And I've also done the edge of the wing. Just a line of tape folding around the edge is all we need. And then I'll fill in this gap here as well. So I'm gonna back mask the tops of the doors and mask out the trims as I did on the other side. But the bit to show you on this side then is how we're gonna mask up this quarter because this isn't being painted. So what we're gonna do is something that's called dead edging in here. Or I know it's dead edging anyway. And essentially what that is, is we're just gonna establish a nice line of tape all the way up there, half in, half out the door shut. So we know that that front leading edge is covered. And then we're gonna mask into the door shut a little bit like we did on the other side as well. And this just makes sure that it's completely covered, no overspray is getting in there and it's, uh, it's protected as it needs to be. And then it means you don't have to put any big sheets of paper or anything like that inside the door shut. There we go, just establishing that same sort of line of tape all the way up, and we'll go all the way up to that window molding. And you don't have to be too like, particular about it at this stage, you just want to get that initial tape on. And then I'm going to bring a nice line of tape all the way down the outside as well. That gives us plenty of surface area then when we come in with our sheeting to be able to tape to that and make sure that we're not trying to work with tight edges or anything like that. We've got plenty of room to tape the sheeting down and get it nice and tight down to the car. So we've got a little bit there as well. Right now, we'll just go inside the door shut a little bit. Again, just up to sort of roughly where the door seal will make contact with the inner shut. Just overlapping that edge again slightly. And it's just important as well, when you put your tape on, just run your hand over it a few times, push all the air out because you don't want any air pockets or anything where overspray or anything like that can get in. But again, it doesn't have to be too perfect or particular inside a door shut. It just has to be functional and it has to work. And that's all we're looking for. Now we'll just finish that top edge off nicely where that moulding is. Make sure that's all closed in. And I'm just going to go with one more little run up the inside again to make sure it's covered enough. 
you know, at this stage, it's one of them. I'd rather spend an extra few pence in masking tape than spend ages trying to mop up door shuts and get over spray off and things like that. It's just much more effective and efficient to do it this way. So there we go, as far as dead edging, that's all you need to do inside a door shut. I've just got a little gap there that I want to cover up. There we go. So again, now we know that door shut's done and we're ready to shut the back door and then we can back mask off the tops, close that front door before we do that and we're ready to put the sheeting over. Right, so we've got our sheeting over the car now. We've pulled that tight. I've tucked it underneath the front bumper. Yeah, I always find a crevice or something to tuck that back in nice and tight. We've done the same with the rear bumper. So the way I attach it then to get it nice and tight is basically I'll take the bag in here and I'll bring that tape around the back of the wheel and tape it onto the tire. Do note though that if the tires are wet, it's just gonna be a nightmare. So you're gonna to wanna to get them dried off or solvent wiped off to be able to get it to stick. But what I find is already just from that one piece of tape, it does tape it nice and tight. So you just want to gather up any excess that you can. Your bagging wants to be as tight as possible because it prevents it blowing around then when you're spraying, which then releases dust and kicks it off into the job. So I'll do the same at the front wheel then. pull it round, press it nicely into the tyre. But you can see then it just gets the bagging nice and tight over the car. That means that you haven't got to worry about any bits flapping around or anything like that. And you can go around and check it all afterwards. You can put bits of tape across the bagging as well to make it even tighter. So I'll do the same at the other side and then we'll start cutting out. Right, so cutting out round your repairs then, we use these little safety cutters. These are designed for, you know, opening boxes and also cutting this masking film. Really, really important little bit of kit this, and I'll link them in the description for you so you can grab some if you need them. Rather than use like an open knife or a Stanley blade, which is so easy to slip with and scratch the paint, if that bumps up against the paint, it's not doing any damage, it's just plastic. So that's what you want to use really if you want to make sure you get it done properly. So what we'll do, um, I'll start cutting out at the top. I'll work my way, I'll show you how we do the arch and attach the mask in there as well. So I'll just start up on this top corner. So all you do, just puncture the, uh, the sheet in there with your cutter and then run it along. And as you can see, it's really easy to actually get the shape. You follow the shape of that repair and everywhere that you've masked as well. So the sheeting just fits where you want it to. It really does make the job quick and efficient, you know, having materials like the sheeting and the cutters, things like that, rather than having to try and piece it all together with paper. And if you are doing like a fairly sizable job, on your car at home, it's well worth investing, you know, 20 quid, $20 or so into a roll of sheeting because it just makes the job a lot cleaner. It makes it a lot more efficient and it's, uh, it's much better as well for when you paint it and not kicking up dust and things like that. So what I do with the arch then is just follow it round. Um, I think I've got a bit of bagging stuck in my cutter there. Obviously the tighter your bagging is, the easier it's going to be to cut as well uh, because it just has that pull on it like that, like you see. Right, so I'll start there. I'll come along the silk cover then. Again, just following that initial frame that I put down with the masking tape earlier.
Uh, about there is where I'm going to close it off for the blend. So, there we go. So all we do then, pull out the bit that we don't want, that exposes the repair area. Now, I'll show you as well, what I said about this black masking earlier, just how this becomes really effective for us. So what we do is we take that sheet in, stick it down to that tape that's facing us, where the sticky sword is facing us, press that in, and that's good to go. So now I'll run a piece of tape down here like so, and it just will completely seal it in to where I want it. So I'll just do this end first, to make sure that's all pinned down where I want it to be. And then as you can see what we do, Take a piece of tape and I'll put it right down close to the edge of the door so that it covers all of that back masking tape. And there we go, that's completely sealed in. Excellent, so I'll work my way around now and I'll show you what we do when we get to the arch. So the arch then, this is a bit more back masking now. What I've done is I've solvent cleaned the inside edge of the arch as well because if you don't, the tape just does not like sticking. And all we do, again, turn the tape round so the sticky side is facing you, press it into the arch, just follow it round. You want a nice even band of tape sticking out so that you can attach the sheet into it. And you can do this in a few pieces, don't have to do it in one piece, just make sure where you do join it up, you press the tape together nicely. Now, and again, back masking like this creates a nice soft edge I mean, you can mask around the wheel on its own and you know, spray into that edge, but it's such a fine edge anyway, and we've scuffed right down to there, so we know we're gonna get the right adhesion. So now what we do then is you just follow that round and the sheeting will stick to it really, really well as it always does to the sticky side of tape. It seems to grab hold and not let go. Follow it round until it's all closed in. And now, very much like with the back masking we did on the door, I'm just going to push that back slightly, make sure it's at the rear of that edge. So what we do, close in this little area here, take that down, and then I'm going to put a piece of tape over the front of the back masking as well, just like I did on the door. And again, we just come up nice and close to the arch and just run it round, follow that shape with your hand so it goes on nice and neat. Neat masking is a bit of a bugbear of mine. I'm a, I'm a bit particular over it sometimes. It doesn't have to be the prettiest as long as it's functional. That's the main thing. As long as it does the job that it's there for, that's all you really need. So there we go then. Take down any little stragglers like that. And that arch is nicely sealed in now, so we know we're not going to get any air going under there, kicking any rubbish out that's going to go in that paint. So, up in the blend area then, now what I do there, everyone has their own kind of way of blending clear coat. Um, I like to leave an open area that we've polished up nice and clean, so that we know that there's not going to be any dust or rubbish in that area. And what I do with the actual sheet in here, is rather than close it off hard, if it's right back here, you could close it off hard if you've got loads and loads of room. But I like to slide a bit of tape underneath there, and then just fold it back around onto the top of the, the sheet in so that I get like a little pocket there. And what that means is, all you're actually gonna get under there is a little bit of fine overspray, which means that it's so much easier to polish off when you come to dressing up that blend and finishing it. So there we go, fully masked up now. Time for a final clean down. Join us in our next video where we're gonna show you how to paint this car and blend silver base coat out across the panels, which will be linked somewhere up here for you. So for now guys, signing off on this one. We'll see you in the next one.